In this video, I will be painting some very infected people, specifically models from Zombicide's VIP Boxes 1 and 2. Good day or night to you, and welcome to the Gaming Tome. My search for zombies suitable for tabletop role-playing games and miniature wargaming brought me to the Zombicide series of board games. The Zombicide games are a great way to get a whole bunch of unpainted zombie miniatures, I have already painted a couple of those board games, so leave a comment down below if you'd like to see a video on that. Over the years, Zombicide has come out with a bunch of mini expansions for their games, like these, the Boxes of Zombies. Now each of these boxes contains 20 miniatures across five different sculpts depicting zombies, wearing the attire or costumes of specific professions or common character tropes. I thought it would be fun to paint some of these for a video, so that is what I'm going to do. Now let's get started with these zombies of VIP box number one. To get the ball rolling, we are starting with one of the funniest zombie miniatures I have ever seen. I call him the hot dog guy. This miniature depicts a zombie wearing a hot dog costume. I started by painting the meat part of the hot dog, a brick red color. Next, I painted the bun sections an orange brown. This is a bit more colorful than hot dog buns that I have seen, but depictions of food often have more color saturation than the real thing. There are big tears and claw marks on the front of the model. Fortunately for this guy, they seem to only be damage to the costume. One of the elbows looks like it has a wound, so I applied a dot of reddish brown. Next comes some blood effects. These are zombies after all. I dipped one of my fraying brushes into red paint and wiped it mostly dry before stippling and dabbing the color all over the front of the model. You know, I don't think that's ketchup on that hot dog. I also got some red paint on the zombie's arm and one of his hands. I carefully painted the teeth and eyes white and gave the model a coat of black and brown wash. This miniature is done. I forgot to put mustard on this one, but made up for it when painting the rest of the box. I guess you could also paint relish on these costumes. This outfit is just bait for the zombie horde. The hot dog guy is a great funny zombie miniature, but not a mini that I need to have duplicates of when using these outside of Zombicide. It sure does stand out from the horde though. Next up is a mini that I call the Rockstar. I don't know who or what this zombie is supposed to be, but it looks like a rock star, so that is what I will call it. This zombie has long hair and a long coat. I painted this coat and the rest of his clothes black. The clothing looks like a costume from the Matrix. The only thing he is missing is some cool sunglasses. To contrast the clothing, I went with a pale eggshell skin tone. I saved a darker shade of black for the hair. The belt gets a thin line of brown and dots of silver paint over the buckle and the studs on his boots. I applied a little bit of red paint as blood effects to the mouth and a spot on the shirt. That is it. This is a simple paint job. This is a nice mini. Unlike the previous one, I don't foresee this one standing out much in the horde. I would like to use it to represent a leader among the zombies. Zombies in modern settings are usually just a mindless horde, but maybe this guy can count as a special zombie or leader in a miniature war game's rules. I like this mini because it reminds me of Gabriel Bolivar from The Strain TV show. You know, 
that character, the rock star who turns into a vampire and then his <laughs> falls off. That caught your attention, didn't it? You're curious now. You need to find out more information about this. Well, go watch the show. It's pretty good. It's by Guillermo del Toro, and it's about a vampire outbreak in New York City. Anyway, I like this mini. It reminds me of that character from the show. That is pretty much all I have to say about this guy. On to the next zombie. This is the zombified nurse. It is a zombie with a stethoscope wearing hospital scrubs. This miniature is fairly simple to paint thanks to its attire. I had to mix together a green and light blue paint to get this color for the clothes. I think that I would have preferred a more teal color, but this green is fine. Next, I painted the skin. The shoe and hair got a coat of dark brown paint. That is right, this zombie only has one shoe. I painted the other foot to look like the zombie is wearing a white sock. The stethoscope is very thin, but I managed to cleanly paint it black with silver on both ends. The mask hanging over the top of the stethoscope also got painted white like that sock. This model has a deep wound on her arm. Another zombie must have really been chomping on that. I applied most of the stippled red blood effects to that region of the model and that side of her clothing. The zombie nurse is a good model to have. It has an outfit that stands out, but not because it is weird or outlandish. I feel like every zombie movie has at least one zombified hospital patient or medical worker. So this will be a welcome addition to many tabletop boards. I am particularly proud of how well I painted the stethoscope cord. The missing shoe is also a nice touch. I would imagine a lot of shoes get lost during a zombie apocalypse. I am surprised that I have not seen a zombie miniature until now with a missing shoe. This is a nice mini and up next we have another good one. Here we have the butcher zombie. This mini depicts a zombified butcher. That's it. Pretty simple. I gave the shirt a mint green color. The apron will be white as I don't want an intense contrast between that and the shirt. That being said, I would like the pants to be a bit darker. I went with a drab brown. The apron and hat get a coat of white paint. I painted the shoes an orange brown and the skin a light gray. I like the detail on this miniature's face. The wrinkles under his chin and the way his eyes kind of bulge give him a scary visage. The inside of the right arm has a wound. It is probably the bite that turned him into a zombie. This spot gets a touch of red brown paint. That white apron is just asking for some blood effects. I kept the blood effects localized to his arm and that side of the apron. Oh, and also around his shoes. Don't worry, the other butcher zombies got their fair share of red paint. A black-brown wash completes the model. The butcher zombie is my favorite from the first set. I like the outfit, I like the pose, and I think he has the best facial features from these first five minis. Primarily, this is the outfit of a butcher, but it has some room for interpretation. The apron and hat say he probably works in food preparation. Maybe he was actually frying donuts, or baking bread, or serving tacos. I don't know, but now that he is a zombie, I think the only food he's going to be cooking is going to be a brain sandwich. Personally, I like to imagine these guys were standing behind the counter at an ice cream parlor before turning into zombies. I painted all of the butchers, shirts, fun, bright colors to steer toward that idea. Last up from the first box of very infected people is the zombie pimp. 
The miniature depicts a zombie wearing the extravagant and flamboyant attire often associated with the pimps in film and television. This one's up there with the hot dog guy for being a silly, wacky miniature. Taking inspiration from the box art, I painted the pants and vest purple, and then added some white paint to the undershirt to make it lavender. There is some nice layering to this outfit. The big coat gets a layer of white paint. The contrast that white shoes will have against the pants is on brand with this costume. The fur portions of the coat get an eggshell color. Now it is time for the little details. The belt, buttons, and hair got painted black. The jewelry around this guy's neck, as well as the belt buckle, were painted a fancy gold. I focused the blood effects around a spot on the model's lower right leg where there appears to be a broken bone. This outfit is so wild that only mild blood effects are sufficient. It just doesn't feel right to splatter red paint over that fancy white coat. The zombie pimp is quite the silly model. The clothing is probably the most complex from the first five minis. It has many layers and some nice details like the shirt buttons. The nature of this costume is an excuse to apply unusual color schemes. The outfit is just shouting, look at me, I have money, or at least I want you to think I have money. I had fun painting the duplicates. I painted this one black and red, which looks like a vampire now that I think about it. I painted this one's outfit blue and orange. There's no way this one's getting lost in the horde. I also like the pose. It kind of looks like a werewolf roaring. I guess you could use this model as a zombie, a vampire, or a werewolf. That's a lot of use out of one miniature. This fall, zombie, vampire, werewolf, pimp is back. And this time, it's personal. Witness action, horror, and this. Zombie Vampire Werewolf Pimp, rated G for good god what have we done. My thoughts about this miniature are similar to those of the hot dog guy. I like having one of these minis, but do not need duplicates. It was fun painting it though. Well that completes the VIP zombies from box 1. Now it is time to move on to box 2. Wow. Now before I move on to the next box of zombies, I should mention that I washed and primed these miniatures before painting them. A lot of these unpainted board game miniatures arrive in their packaging with residue on their surface from the manufacturing process. Now this residue will wick paint off, which will be a real pain when trying to paint them. After they've been washed, they should be primed because that will add a layer that helps the paint adhere to the model even better. For bonus protection, I recommend varnishing the miniatures after they have been painted it's just a good idea, it'll protect your work. The second group of very infected people starts with a zombie Santa Claus. This model is an excuse for painting these minis during the holiday season. It is an easy model to paint, especially for beginners because it only requires five colors. The suit gets a coat of red paint, while the fur and beard get white paint.
This belt is nice and thick. It is a comfortable size to paint as opposed to the usual thin lines. The boots also got painted black. The buckle gets a careful outline of silver. I decided to go with gray skin. I don't want there to be any confusion about whether or not this is a zombie Santa. This model already has a lot of red, so I just skipped the blood effects entirely. Shopping malls and zombies have gone together well since Dawn of the Dead, so why not throw some mall Santas into the mix? This is a solid funny zombie to add in. I would like to run a zombie apocalypse tabletop role-playing game set in a mall and use this as the final boss. I'd like to just have a super zombie leading the horde, and that super zombie will be... Santa. How funny would that be? This is another zombie that I don't really need multiples of, but it is a very common costume during the holiday season, so it is fine if zombie Santas come in groups. I call this the Zombie Punk. It depicts a slender zombie wearing a torn shirt, sagging pants with a chain hanging around the waist, studded jewelry, and a mohawk. I started by painting the pants black. This model has a lot of skin showing, so those areas come next. I stuck with light gray for the torn shirt. The zombie's pants are sagging, so I applied a little white paint over what looks like exposed underwear. I used dark brown paint on the belt to distinguish it from the black pants. I then used black paint on the bracelets and collar and followed up with silver studding. The chain also received some silver paint. The most exciting feature to paint on this model is the hair. This is the time to stray away from the natural hair colors. I chose green for this guy's hair. This zombie has a wound on his arm and some decay on his head. I spotted some reddish brown paint over those and later came back with some red blood effects. I would not mind having multiple punk zombies in the horde. Maybe they are just a group of fans for that rock star from the first box of VIPs. My favorite detail of these models is the hair. I painted the hair a different color for each of the other punk zombies, and I like the results. My favorite is the blue. This zombie is skinny. It looks like he has been undead for a while. Maybe he was trapped in an underground concert space or left wandering a stadium for much of the apocalypse. The next VIP is a zombified police officer. I started by painting the pants black and the shirt blue. The hat also got painted these colors. I chose drab green for this one's skin. The belt, boots, and various pouches and holsters around the waistline were painted dark brown to stand apart from the black pants. The badges and pouch buttons received a careful application of gold paint. The color scheme is pretty dark, so these bits of gold really pop. This zombie doesn't appear to have any visible wounds, but his shirt is untucked, and that is a wound to his professionalism. Minus five points. I decided to go heavier on the blood effects around the mouth, hands, and feet. This zombie already has had something, or should I say, someone to eat. This is another good common zombie miniature to have on the tabletop. I would place this in the same category as the nurse zombie. I feel like every zombie movie has a cop or zombie cop, so this is a nice addition to the set. The pose is classic. It is a standard zombie shuffle. The eyes came out great on this model. 
They are tiny dead pinpoints, lazily searching for the next human to shuffle toward. Next is the Zombie Sailor. The model depicts a rather dynamic undead specimen wearing a classic navy uniform from a time that I think we can all collectively refer to as back in the day. This is perhaps the simplest mini to paint from both boxes of VIPs. I started by painting the outfit white. Next I painted the skin a desaturated brown. This will contrast the white and provide a little color. The shoes, tie, and belt were painted black. Two details I almost forgot were the mustache and a couple of badges or medals on the chest. Unfortunately for this model, the medals were covered up by the blood effects. I went heavy with the red paint because white clothes on a zombie... That's just a joke. Clothes do not stay white long when they are being worn by a flesh-eating monster. The Sailor Zombie is a fun mini, but again, not one that I need duplicates of. It has a very specific costume that I think would be hard to find outside of a costume party or a museum. I would say this, along with the Zombie Pimp, Santa, and Hot Dog Guy, are the most obviously costumed characters in these sets. One thing the Sailor does have going for him is the pose. This stance feels a little more energetic. It is like the zombie has just spotted a human, and an instant later he's going to charge after them. I painted one of these sailors with gray skin and no blood effects, and now I am noticing that he looks like he has a gray scale filter over him. It is like he walked right out of an old film. Pretty cool. The last zombie from box two is what I call the zombie handyman. It is a depiction of a zombified construction worker or carpenter, or, you know, handyman. Someone who does stuff with, with tools and building things and whatnot. This is a more complex miniature due to all of the accessories on his person. Taking inspiration from the box art, I painted the vest and pants blue to make them look like denim. I painted the shirt gray. The hard hat is an opportunity to break out the bright yellow paint. There are a lot of leather details on this model, so I used two shades of brown. The gloves, shoes, and belt were painted a warm orange-red brown, and the utility belt was painted drab brown. I used some metallic paint on the buckle and what I assumed to be a tool sticking out of a pouch. I am seeing a pattern to the wounds on these zombies. It seems like the arms are prime targets for zombie bites. Note to self. Add metal bracers to survival kit. Ah, there we go. I speckled the front of the zombie with blood effects because the pose looks like this guy just made a big swipe with that gloved claw. The zombified handyman is a nice model. This is another one of the more common outfits, but this one has more accessories than a lot of the other VIPs. It has a dynamic pose and cool details. Maybe this zombie gets critical hit resistance thanks to that hard hat, and maybe he gets a boost of strength as well thanks to his former occupation. In his previous life, this guy built and fixed things, but now as a zombie, he spends his time tearing down boarded up windows and doors that hide tasty humans. Overall, these are some nice zombie miniatures and thanks to their unique outfits, they are much more interesting to paint than a lot of the other zombies I've worked on in the past. I really like these mini expansion sets. They feel like a product that is designed for us miniature gamers that are more interested in the models than the game Zombicide. However, I will say that I wish these two sets of VIPs were 
combined and it was actually just one set where you got all 10 sculpts but only one or two of each i don't need four zombies wearing hot dog suits but if they were wearing corn dog outfits what are these minis useful for i think zombicide minis make great zombie proxies for miniature wargaming and tabletop role-playing games Due to the unusual attire, these miniatures might not be as great for a normal zombie horde, but they still have their uses. In the game, they can be special zombies with bonuses and maybe special abilities. Sir fix -a lot here could have critical hit resistance because of his hard hat. Maybe the butcher has bonus attack damage because he died with his hand clenched around a meat cleaver. In a role-playing game, why not make the VIPs walking loot boxes? Maybe these special zombies carry valuable items and the survivors have to decide whether or not it's worth their time and resources to go after them. They could also be the objectives of a scenario. Maybe the survivors need to get a key to a security office and the only way they can do that is by finding and eliminating the zombie police officer on the wargaming front these could stand in as the so-called heroes or leaders of an infected army list some squad based games only use the squad leaders model for measuring range and movement so if you have a horde of zombies as a squad why not use the VIPs as the squad leaders? They will certainly stand out from their respective squads. These are not your average zombies, but they certainly have some value in tabletop gaming. So those are the VIP zombies from Zombicide Classic. Which of these very infected people is your favorite? Leave a comment down below. My favorites are the Butcher and Zombie Santa. If these look like something you want to pick up and paint for yourself, then go for it. There is a new edition of Zombicide out now, and these were released actually for the previous edition, so I don't know how much longer these will be around for. I do hope Cool Mini or Not keeps going with these mini expansion boxes. They are an easy way for us tabletop miniature gamers to add an undead crowd to our collections. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. If you want to see more content, then sit on Santa's lap and tell him you want a subscribe button click for Christmas. And then get up and run, because that's not Santa. It's zombie Santa. Get out of there, kid. Go! Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep making and keep playing. Have a good one. Wow.